David Bonson is one of my go-to people. He's an economist extraordinaire and a market advisor. He joins us from California early this morning. Good morning, David. How are you? I'm doing great, Hugh. Good to be with you. Good to be with you. My first question is, are we going to see a Santa Claus rally? Well, I'm going to tell you the same thing I tell everyone when we're asking about a two-day or a two-week period, is that not only do I not know, but nobody else knows either. If a Santa Claus rally just means a big boost up in equity values near the end of the year, we just had one. I mean, the last four weeks, as bond yields have come down significantly, stock prices have come up about 2,000 points. So it's entirely possible that Christmas just came a little early for investors. Well, David, I I deploy your caution, but I suppose that's why you're a good financial advisor. In your newsletter, you let us know that existing home sales were off 100,000 in October. And then this stuns me. All cash buyers are 29% of home purchases. I don't think I've ever heard of that before. Have you? Well, I haven't, and neither has our country. And it does speak to the fact that that's on a very low denominator. There's just simply very little volume happening in terms of home sale transactions. But why would we get to a point where a third of transactions are from people paying all cash? simply because people can't afford to go borrow in the mortgage market. Well, that portends for me very bad news for 2024, because that means that people aren't going to be building homes. And if you don't build homes, you don't have, they're the giant job generator in America's home construction. I like your against doomsdayism, by the way, David. In 1950, one out of five homes in America, in America, lacked running water and a toilet. That no longer exists because we built a lot of houses, but we're not building them now. What does that do to the economy? Well, I think that the major issue here, and this is where I kind of have a bone to pick with people on the left and the right that believe permanently escalating home prices that go up far above GDP levels, far above inflation, that that's our birthright. I vehemently disagree as a matter of policy. We don't have enough homes and that has made an affordability crisis happen. The people with good jobs, with, with uh, basically, they're qualified home buyers, but they can't afford to buy. Now, mortgage rates are a problem adding to that now. But even before mortgage rates went to 7 and 8%, they were 2 and 3%. And you still had prices that were too unaffordable. And that is largely because of the combination of Fed action, which was grossly irresponsible out of COVID, and a lack of supply, the issue you're bringing up. We need to build more homes, period. Uh, David, let's close on this, because I gave the lecture yesterday to someone who didn't believe me, that if you build more at any part of the market, you help the entire market. I don't care if you're building a luxury home or if you're building low-income housing. If you add stock, you help everyone with affordability. Is my theory correct? It most certainly is. There's different levels of magnitude to how much it helps. But capital stock, a greater inventory or supply, builds overall demand. This is not a debatable issue, by the way, in classical economics. Uh, The great uh, John Baptiste Say taught us that supply creates demand. You produce more product at one level, it builds a market for all, it gives price discovery. Uh, There's a whole lot of advantages. But, but Hugh, the issue right now is- Why do economists not know this? We need low-priced homes as well. We need all of the above. Why, Why do economists not get through to the local land use board, the planning commissions, the city councils, the county commissions- that have that they apparently are ignorant of this basic law, which is approve more housing and house prices will come down or at least not rise as fast. I don't think they're ignorant about it at all. I just don't think it's an economic issue for them. It's a political one. The, the people that are fighting new home development aren't fighting laws of economics. They just don't care. It's a political issue. It's environmental. It's social. They have another agenda Uh, the economic concerns be damned. I mean, that's literally what their point of view on this is, Hugh. David, this is where constitutionalism comes in. Would you uh, would you support a federal override of local growth controls? Because that is possible. It's interstate commerce. It's within the delegated powers of the federal government to actually mandate things that would destroy the ability of nimbyism to pollute 
market forces, but it also is kind of contrary to the founder's intent. Last minute to you. Yeah, I probably would not support that, at least not prima facie, for the reason you just said, contrary to founder's intent. And I haven't looked into it enough to really think through first principles on it. But but as a prima facie reaction, when someone says, would you support some sort of federal uh, interaction, my answer is almost always going to be no. <laughs> David, how do people get your newsletter if they want it? Because it's fabulous. Dividendcafe.com. We have to have an easy URL. So dividendcafe.com gets them there. Thanks for the kind words. And there's market update, economic commentary every day. Every single day at dividendcafe.com. David Bonson, thank you. I don't know who came up with that URL, but I hope they get a bonus at Christmas because it's a great one.